Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Myself, Dr. Memuna Asif. By profession, I am a physiotherapist and today I am going to deliver a lecture on the subject of biomechanics and our today's topic is neurovascular response to stretch. So, we know that there are some sensory receptors that are present in our muscle. For example, this is the muscle. It is the belly of the muscle and these are the tendons of the muscles. Different types of receptors are present at different places at different locations in a muscle. So, first of all, we will get to know about GTO. What are GTOs? GTOs are Golgi tendon artery. These are the sensory receptors that are present in muscle tendon junction. These are the muscle, this is the tendon part and this is the muscle part. So, these are present in muscle tendon junction. And they are present in both region and insertion of a muscle. And how are they being arranged there? They are arranged in a pattern which is in series. For example, 10 to 15 fibers are present, are attached and they are present in series with them. So it can be demonstrated that Golgi tendon organ are present in series. And how are they stimulated? Golgi tendon organ are stimulated by the tension. For example, tension is produced in the muscle and they will be stimulated. One way is tension and another way is passive stretch. But they have increased threshold for the stimulation by passive stretch. So what is the effect produced by these kind of Golgi tendon organ? They respond through neural activity and what that happens in neural activity? They inhibit tension in agonist. Actually, we know that there are two types of muscle, agonist and antagonist. Agonist is the muscle which is the actually performing that movement and an antagonist is opposing that movement. So what happens in agonist and what happens in antagonist? By the activation of Golgi tendon organ, there is inhibition of tension generation or tension development in agonist. And there is initiation of tension development in antagonist. So it means that what does Golgi tendon do? If there is increased tension in the muscle or if there is passive stretch in the muscle, what will happen in agonist? It will relax because there is inhibition of tension in agonist. Some other sensory receptors are also present. And what are those sensory receptors? Muscle spindle fiber. Muscle spindle fiber. What is the location where they are present? As Golgi tendon organ were present in muscle, muscle tendon junction, but they are present throughout the fibers. They can be present throughout the fibers. But the only pattern they follow that they are located parallelly. They are not present in series. They are located parallelly. And they have a particular shape. What does that shape mean and how it is being exhibited? There is a surrounding of connective tissue. Inside of that, there are about um, there are about 3 to 10 small fibers are present. So these are 3 to 10 small fibers around that connective tissue is present which is giving it a covering. These are basically intrafusal fibers and outside for example if this is we can say that this is our muscle spindle fiber opposite to that in the remaining region extrafusal fibers are present. Inside that connective tissue intrafusal fibers are present but outside that extrafusal fibers are present. So what does basically happen in that? I already told that in GTOs there is inhibition of muscle tension in agonist but opposite kind of response is being produced from the muscle spindle fiber. What actually happens? There is initiation of tension development in agonist and there is inhibition of tension development is antagonist. So if we say that opposite to the Golgi tendon organ, the sensory receptor would be our muscle spindle fiber. And there are two types of response which are being produced from it. Static response and dynamic response. Static response is amount of muscle length change and dynamic response is rate of muscle length change. Static response is being produced by what kind of intrafusal fiber and dynamic response
response is produced by what? Static response is produced by nuclear chain fiber, which are present in, which are basically intrafusal fiber, nuclear chain fiber. While the dynamic response is produced by nuclear bag fiber. So it is being clear now that these intrafusal fibers are of two types. Nuclear chain fiber and nuclear bag fiber. And they produce two types of activity. Static activity and dynamic activity. In static activity, we get to know about amount of muscle length change. And in this dynamic activity, we get to know about rate of muscle length change. And they both work independently. But dynamic response is much more stronger. So when another thing we are going to learn today is stretch reflex. Stretch reflex is also produced from muscle tendon, uh, muscle spindle fiber, and another thing is reciprocal inhibition. What is the, that stretch reflex and what is that reciprocal inhibition? Reciprocal inhibition means inhibition of um, inhibition of tension development in antagonist would be considered as reciprocal inhibition. As uh, for example, a muscle is working, a muscle is contracting and a opposite and reciprocal muscle, which is present on the other side, which is giving the opposite function, that is being inhibited. So reciprocal inhibition is being clear here that inhibition of tension development in antagonist. And what is that stretch reflex? Basically, it is a monosynaptic reflex. It is initiated by the muscle stretch. For example, there is a mild stretch in the muscle and it will result in tension development in that muscle. And how that tension development will be produced? Basically, it is the neural transmission across a single synapse. If I give you example of knee jerk test. Have you seen that knee jerk test? In the knee jerk test, what basically happens is a patient is sitting, a person is sitting and uh, the knees are basically flex in that position. What will happen? We will strike our quadricep tendon with the hammer. When the quadricep tendon is being striked from the hammer, we are trying to produce stretch in that muscle. What will happen in the response of that? The afferent fibers of our muscle spindle fiber, what they will do? They will give a signal to our spinal cord. And what that spinal cord will do? When the spinal cord will be activated, it will give an excitatory response to our efferent fibers. And our efferent fibers will come back and give a signal to our muscle to give a contraction. And contraction will occur. So this is very common example that when we strike our um, quadricep tendon at our knee, the knee extension occurs. This is being produced from the stretch reflex. So this was all about Golgi tendon organ muscle spindle fibers, and neuromuscular response to stretch. If you guys have any query or any question, you guys can ask me. And this is the topic, this is the sub part of the technique of joint flexibility, which we started in last lecture. And this is one of the technique for increasing joint flexibility. Thank you so much.